Hello everyone, Wolfie here. I hope everyone is having a blast stomping on bosses in tier 6 raids so far, along with grinding Zolaman with your ults and skipping the entire tier 5 gear up. Yeah, I bet many players out there share the same opinion about it. Anyway, today's video is the first step into the last raid of TBC. We are gonna go over the boss mechanics, strategies, tactics and tips and tricks about each encounter, which there are 6 and each is very different from one another. So without any more blabbing, let's get into it. Kalesgus fight is actually a fight against two bosses in two realms, normal one against dragon that's called dragon realm and Satrovar the corruptor in Kalex mines that's called a demon realm. Since the fight is started from the dragon realm I'll explain him first. Melee that hits for about 5000 on a tank cannot crush and on its own it's quite easy to heal and mitigate but it's not only damaging ability the boss uses on a tank. Arcane Buffet is spam AoE ability that radiates from the boss, hits for about 500 every 8 seconds and applies a stackable debuff that increases arcane damage taken by 500 for 40 seconds. It's not dispellable unless you use Divine Shield, Ice Block or Cloak of Shadows. It is resistible though, so a small chunk of arcane resistance is welcome. Although all of the stacks can be cleared by entering a Demon Realm. Frost Breath has a 12 seconds cooldown and its Calyx Cleave Con ability deals moderate amount of frost damage and slows the attack speed of affected targets by 75%. It's dispellable. Tail Lash is a general dragon ability. Good ol' don't be a dragon's head or tail. Be in between dragon's legs. Like this, I mean. Deals about 1.5000 damage, but stuns for 2 seconds and that's annoying. Wild Magic debuff is, well, wild and fun. It's cast randomly and lasts 20 seconds and cannot be dispelled. It's a lottery debuff that can be positive or negative. One of the 6 possible you see on the screen increases damage, threat or healing, or decreases cost of spells and abilities, hit chance, and lastly decreases haste, or to put it in perspective increases your casting time by 100%. Lastly the most important mechanic slash ability Dragon uses is Spectral Blast. It might sound simple, but this ability does a lot. Firstly, it's casted on a random non-tank member of the raid that doesn't have Spectral Exhaustion debuff, every 20 to 25 seconds. Secondly, deals about 5.7k Arcane damage, which scales up depending on how many stacks of Arcane Buffet you have, and to anyone in 8 yards radius and knocking them back 10 yards. Thirdly, the targeted player is teleported to the Demon Realm and leaves a portal in the Dragon Realm for 10 seconds that other players can take and also get teleported to the Demon Realm. Once the player is in the Demon Realm, all Arcane Buffet stacks are cleared and he or she will stay there for 60 seconds. Once 60 seconds has passed, you are ported back to Dragon Realm, not the place where you are teleported from, but to the place where you are currently standing, and you get the Spectral Exhaustion debuff for another 60 seconds, this allowing you to go to the Demon Realm again through Spectral Blast or Portal itself. Now to cross to the other side, to the Demon Realm, there is a helper NPC, the humanoid form of Kaelic fighting off a demon corrupting his mind. Just to clear this out, Kaelic can tank it decently well, but it's safer to have your own tank tank it. Theoretically, if your DPS is sufficient enough, you will kill both bosses before Satrovar kills Kaelic in the Demon Realm. Anyway, the demon abilities are these. Melee hits harder than dragons, averaging about 7000 physical damage. Unlike dragon, demon can crush. Corrupting Strike deals over 9000 damage and stun Stang for 3 seconds dealing additional 1000 damage every second for those 3 seconds. It's only spike damage you have to keep the track of. Shadow Vault Folly is a cone based attack targeting one random player and two nearby players and hits for about 5000 shadow damage. Look at it as a swarm is eager to feed attack from Mount Hyjal. Lastly Curse of Boundless Agony that is casted on a random player in Demon Realm lasts for 30 seconds and deals damage over time, which increases tick damage every few ticks, like this. If it's decursed, or player dies, or entire duration of curse expires, curse jumps onto new player and starts over. That's why you shouldn't spam decurse, but rather decurse after 10 to 15 seconds of duration before it starts dealing higher damage. When the pull is happening, everyone needs to focus up on their main monitor and close the anime on your second screen or at least pause it, since shortly after the boss is pulled, a blue circle closes around the platform and does not allow anyone to pass through it. Tank should position the boss at the edge of the circle where the raid would be safe from frost breath and tail lash attacks. 
In that time, the raid focuses on spreading around the platform to minimize damage taken from Spectral Blast. Once in the Demon Realm, form a circle around the boss and use Bloodlust there, group by group, but stay close to get revitalized from Humanoid Kaelic, and to be in range of Chain Heal Spam. After teleporting back into Dragon Realm, this is where it gets easier. Everyone with Spectral Exhaustion debuff should stack in the middle of the platform to allow others without debuff to spread in empty space thus evading blast damage. It's a double-edged sword there, since people can tunnel vision and just blast a big part of the raid in a stacking position. Communication is important between the demon and dragon realm. Look at it as a Romeo and Juliet fight in Karasan, but instead of dying together, dragon and demon should be DPS down to 10% and then killed off, since once one of them is under 10% HP, the other one enrages. Perfect time for some tanking cooldowns. The order of kill doesn't matter, but keep in mind that when Dragon reaches 1 HP, all of his abilities will stop including Spectral Blast Teleport. The most usual strat is to kill a demon and then to finish off the Dragon, since he cannot crush. All sweet in Chiris, but how and when and who should take the portals? That's delicate as it comes. So, the raid has 5 parties, but now they will be assigned to groups. Depending on your raid setup, amount of tanks and healers, you can go with 3 or 4 groups. I suggest 3 since it works well with both 2 and 3 tank strategy. After the pull, melees can stay out spread it to evade being blasted into smithereens by first portal. And furthermore not to deal blast damage to the tank. As shown on the old diagram, 3 groups and 3 tanks is easiest to understand and get into. Especially with the nice RNG with portals. If a player from a certain group gets ported, the entire group takes the portal along with the assigned tank. Every time a tank gets out of the portal, he or she should taunt the dragon from the current tank to ease on the healer since an arcane buffet can stack up too much. So every group has a tank, at least 2 healers, decursor and rest dpsers. Other tactic with 3 groups I won't cover too much either, basically you have a holy paladin dedicated main tank healer and an additional floater healer that has to heal the main tank in case holy paladin gets ported. If he doesn't then he has to divine shield at 7 or 8 stacks of buff it and continue healing. By the time he gets new stacks or gets ported, healers from the first portal will come back already and take over main tank healing while the holy paladin goes to the demon realm to reset his stacks. The strategy requires some more gear, but I'm sure some top guilds might still use it. What you have to take into consideration is that A. Like other content, Sunwell might be easier than expected. B. Sunwell might have a Sunwell Radiance, highly likely. C. If there is no one in Dragon Realm, Dragon will reset the entire fight. D. Battle Resting player will clear his or her Spectral Exhaustion. E. Kalec is healing heavy fight, COHs and Resto Shamans will be quite valuable here. And F. Once all groups go in and out of Demon Realm, everyone should just watch their debuff and position accordingly. Now to move on to some trash mobs and their abilities. Sunblade Protector is a big greenish robot, pretty much the fell version of Arcane Protectors from Silver Moon. It has huge HP pool with about 5000 melee swings and nasty fell lightning that can connect through up to 8 players dealing partially resistible damage up to 4000. They usually come together with Scout which activates them. Sunblade Cabalist is an annoying warlock type of mob that spams shadow balls that hit for about 3.8000. Puts a mana draining dot on a random player that can be dispelled. Dot deals as much damage as mana it drains, which is up to 5000 over 12 seconds. Lastly, every now and then they spawn an imp which has its threat table which means it goes straight to the healer and spam him with his fireballs. Sunblade Archmage is of course a mage type of mob and does 800 damage frost nova, rooting everyone for 6 seconds in 15 yards. Also uses Arcane Explosion which deals about 3000 damage to everyone up until 10 yards of itself. Lastly, as a mage, it can blink as far as 45 yards, unless there is something in the way. Sunblade Dawn Priest is a healer of the group, and will use Renew which can be mass dispelled from other Sunblades including a robot. Besides that, it has a Holy Nova which heals Sunblades again and deals damage to players, up to 2500. The least dangerous mob as long as you keep it separated from the group. Sunblade Dusk Priest on the other hand, as a Shadow Priest type of mob, has nasty Mind Flay that deals 2000 damage per second for 4 seconds and it chains up to 3 players. 
Shadow Ward Pain that deals about 4000 damage every 3 seconds for 15 seconds. Lastly, it can fear a random raid member. It would be the most dangerous trash mob to deal with, but you can dispel pain and you can interrupt mind play by quick sheep, fear, dead coil, repentance or even blood oath racial. Sunblade Vindicator is the one that carries the title of most dangerous trash mob. Basically, it's an arms warrior that deals strong physical melee damage, averaging 6000 and sometimes uses cleave which can hit for way more depending on your mitigation. For example, it can one-shot non-plate bearer class. Combine it with Sunlight Radiance and you're in danger. Don't think so? Well, Vindicator can spice it up with some occasional mortal strike that can penetrate your armor and have your healers pop some cooldowns. Especially since a mortal strike can deal a ton of damage. Sunblade Slayer is a hunter type of mob, can shoot for some decent damage, melee is not that strong at all. But what you have to take care of is healing slaying shot dot on a random raid member. It deals 100% of player's HP as damage over 4 seconds, so 25% of HP per tick. Without healing, the target will die. Beside that, it can scatter shot and CC a player for 4 seconds, dealing about 2000 damage maximum. Sunblade Dragonhawk is a beast type of mob, hunter's pet pretty much. Does some fire breath cone damage that hits for about 2500 damage, can be asleeved by a druid and easy to deal with. Sunblade Scout lastly, patrolling mob with least amount of HP but hits very very hard. Its function is to activate the robot. Scout is also connected to a pack of mob he's patrolling by. You should always clear the pack and then pull a scout and robot. Other way around is quite hard to deal with. Oh yeah, this bugger mob is of course a rogue type of mob. Sunlight Raid is the most versatile raid considering mechanics and abilities bosses use, along with their phases. Each boss is tasked with testing the raid with different stuff. For example, Kalec will test your awareness, both raid and spatial. Where do you stand, what debuff do you have, how long it's left on it, etc. Once everyone masters this, along with fulfilling your raid role as a healer, tank or DPS, then you will down this boss. Thanks for checking out this guide. Do you remember when you killed this boss for the first time? Let me know down in the comments. This is it for this one, stay safe and have fun playing the game. I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.